Hello, I'm Ben Tuman, and welcome to Skipped History. Last week, we discussed how after Charles Koch's dad died, the only thing left in his way were the courts and the government. This week's story is about a fringe school that would further shape Charles's future and ours as well. I read about it in Dark Money by Jane Mayer and some weird sources about cults. Let's just start with Robert Lefebvre, the Freedom School's founder. Born in Idaho and raised in the Adams family, he worked in news, real estate, and as a disc jockey. While in the studio one day, he had a vision. A glorious voice said, I am to him with the power of thunder. And the sound of the voice was accompanied, he wrote, by the gentlest odor of roses. I know what you're thinking. Who hasn't had thunderous indigestion after eating a bouquet and accidentally dropped acid instead of Pepto? But in the case of Robert Lefebvre, he belonged to a cult called I Am, believed that humans had yet to reach their full potential, and that the government was limiting us from doing so. So in 1957, he started the Freedom School in Colorado Springs, which offered two-week seminars advocating for abolishing the government. One might call that anarchy. In fact, a group of Illinois teachers sent to a session of the Freedom School in 1959 notified the FBI that the school advocated for no government, no police department, no fire department, no public schools, not even national defense. This is, of course, anarchy. Or, as the Marquis de Lafayette might say, anarchy, anarchy. The faith made the teachers all panicky. But not Charles Koch, who attended the Freedom School after getting a degree from MIT in 1958 and loved it. Totally unrelated, the Freedom School taught free market economics, which held that the government should place minimal restrictions on companies' behavior, you know, the kinds of restrictions that Charles was keen to avoid after a trench bully childhood. The school also taught a version of history in which the South should have been allowed to secede, taxes were theft, and the robber barons were heroes. A version of history that, according to an old Koch family friend, if you grew up with more money than God and felt weird about it, would make you feel a lot better. And that seems to be the case. Charles, who was introduced to the Freedom School by a far right-leaning friend of his Nazi-loving father, became a funder and trustee of the school and credited it as the place where he first developed a passionate commitment to liberty. Speaking of liberty, or the opposite of it, in the 70s, at a conference sponsored by the Kochs, a libertarian historian named Leonard Legio suggested that libertarians emulate the Nazis and indoctrinate students to win more people to their cause. And you'll never believe this, but Charles and the proud fascist family tradition warmed to the idea. And in 1981, he began a quest to spread the Freedom School's teachings to the rest of us. His first target was George Mason, a public university in Virginia. There, the Kochs began funding the Mercatus Center, which advocated for similar economic principles as the ones Charles learned at the Freedom School. And sharing a building with Mercatus was the Institute for Humane Studies, which was founded by another trustee of the Freedom School and staffed by people like Leonard Legio. And because George Mason is so close to DC, IHS and Mercatus fellows regularly testify as experts at congressional hearings. In 2004, for example, 14 of 23 regulations that President George W. Bush placed on a hit list, eight of which were environmental regulations, were suggested by Mercatus scholars. Today, several members of the Trump administration, working in things like healthcare and in the EPA, have ties to the Koch-funded centers, and they're just the tip of the iceberg. The Koch's Freedom School-esque programs now extend to over 300 schools, ranging from the University of West Virginia to Brown University where the Kochs donated to the Political Theory Project, a euphemism for anarchy, anarchy. We make the liberals free markety. So clearly what we learn when we're younger can really shape our actions and viewpoints as we grow older. Look at Charles Koch. Raised by a tyrannical father, he turned to the liberating teachings of a literal visionary who once fired a bouquet, and because of them, Charles came to equate freedom with the freedom to be a robber baron and pollute the planet we all inhabit. Although the Freedom School went defunct in the 1970s and Robert Lefebvre died in 1986, his teachings now extend to countless students thanks to the continued efforts of his star pupil. Thankfully, another Freedom School was teaching students in the early 60s. Tune in next time to learn more about that bit of skipped history.